community. It made where it was convincing for me is that I thought about my volunteering activities in the past, and that I got the most out of the ones where I was actually involved in the community. Um, and uh, the other ones, I guess sometimes I've done it. Svash, when we traveled for optometry school, I think I wanted to travel as much as I really wanted to do eye exams. And sometimes if we give for the church, sometimes I think I just do that out of obedience. I don't, I mean, not to knock it, I don't know that I want to do that. I just do it. And then for the, um, uh, when I, again, when I went to Eritrea, I did that. I might have maybe wanted to travel partly. But when we did the community stuff, like the uh, supporting Round Rock Christian and even a blood drive, if you're doing a blood drive and you're giving of your blood, like you don't feel well for the rest of the day. So I think for me, those are the ones that made bigger differences. So now to do a big transition, we're gonna move on to dispensing and adjusting. Now I'll try to go quick. Um, and just so you know, um, I have some sheets and you guys got those sheets. Some of this stuff I'm just gonna fly over and you'll, you'll need to read these sheets on your own a little bit. Um, you did get a, a frame adjustment checklist, four point alignment of, of the glasses. That one everybody got. And there's an optician's training man, manual on adjusting here. We're gonna keep that in the lab. Especially if you're newer to this practice and you haven't adjusted before, you probably, in your free time, you need to read through these 12 pages or so. Okay, I think dispensing and adjusting the ribbon and the bow on the package. Probably the most overlooked part of what we do. In fact, we've hardly never, we've hardly even touched on it. We talk about sales. We talk about exams. Have we ever really sat down and said these are the steps and the procedures to finishing up? Well, let's start with the end in mind. We're here at the beginning of our talks. We start with the end in the mind, and I think that you end up uh, getting a really good, you get a really good product. Okay, so if you want to uh, start with dispensing and adjusting, my question then is what position is each person in the office in order to dispense properly? So we have to have the employees in the proper spots. In order to dispense properly, we need to work together. We will follow the step-by-step -step guideline. So ideally, there'll be three op opticians in the optical, two front desk employees and one tech at the front desk. So jobs will be dispensed in this order. First order of dispensing is the tech. Second line of defense is the front desk. If there's no tech up there, then the front desk will be dispensing the glasses. Third order would be the optician that's not assigned to a doctor. The fourth order will be opticians that have a doctor assigned. Now I know that's a change from what we've done. If it's at lunch or we're understaffed, the same order applies. Um, say there's no tech. Just start with number two. Say that there's no front desk employee, start with number three. <coughs> Say that there's no optician that's not assigned to a doctor, well then you just go to number four. Okay, um, so on point number five here, if we are short staffed and the optical is busy, a manager or myself will assist and may be stationed at the front. They may assign themselves to the aforementioned order and or to that position. Since opticians are not necessarily dispensing their own jobs, they are encouraged to stop by and say a kind word to the patient that they took care of. So to continue the order of operations, now the patient, you've decided you're the one dispensing or you're getting that patient started. As the patient, his or her name or date of birth, I don't care which one you use, pull up the patient's record. Place the patient's name on the optical schedule like we do. Sign the patient in for a glasses pickup. Now on that glasses pick pickup section, um, up here, um, it'll say glasses pickup right there where my pointer is um, on, the, on the left side. Um, but the patient may not be signed in to a position like front desk or or, uh, or lane one or lane two or anything like that. Um, so sign the patient in. If the tech or the front desk 
not, is not dispensing, assign the optician by name or add to the optical wait list. Okay, you may optionally pick up the phone, dial that person's extension, beep, say nothing so that they're aware that now there is a patient on this task list for the optical and uh, a patient up here. You don't, you don't that's again optional. It's just a way to alert them if you need to. Ask the patient to have a seat. So then the dispensing staff member, once that's been determined, will click the, the first thing that they'll do is click the dispensed tab in Crystal. Again, that dispensed tab, let's go into a test patient. So if you go into here and you go to frames, okay. you probably have to have an order in there. Just don't create one and save it, and then you can hit new order. New order. Right there. Save that. Why don't you one. save it? It's fine. Okay. There you go. Ignore. Just ignore. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was going to be a pain. Okay. Yeah, let you have it. You'll have the dispense button. First thing you'll do is click on the dispense button right here. Okay. The, the glasses are dispensed. Now you may write notes down here at the notes if you need to. But you also but, have to save that. Okay. Click save. There you go. Ignore it. Okay. Do that. We want you to click the dispense button. It, it retains more information. Instead of the drop down menu to change the status. The status should be received. So what happens sometimes if you change it on the drop down menu, you accidentally hit some other icon rather than dispensed, and then it doesn't go on the reports the right way. So when you click on the dispense tab, we know that it, it, it shows dispensed. Now, since I've been preparing for this talk, we have been inventorying glasses. And on the last inventory report, we had about 12 pairs of glasses that weren't here, that were supposed to be in the optical. They have, I think they have been dispensed, but for whatever reason, they were not dispensed in the computer. So I really don't want it done any other way. I want it done this way consistently. Supposedly, if the first thing that you do every single time is click dispensed, it will be dispensed every time. If for some weird reason the glasses aren't here, or the glasses need to be moved, maybe they don't meet our specifications <coughs> to give them to the patient, uh, you can go back to the drop-down menu and change it again to at lab or whatever it needs to be. So that says, do not, uh, on the last, second to last bullet point, it says do not click edit and drop-down status to dispense. Look to see if there's a balance due as well, of course. Grab the product for the patient. Okay. No patient should ever wait more than five minutes to dispense. There are situations where our dispensing order would be, say, <laughs> Christian's at the front desk, but Christian took a patient back out to pretest. That means the front desk is in order, but both of the front desk employees are on the phone. That means that the optician without a patient, the, the optician without a doctor is on the order. And so we may go down the order but since Brittany in that case wouldn't be assigned to a doctor, but she has a patient sitting in front of her, the dispense patient may take a seat for five minutes. But the patient shouldn't wait for more than five minutes. When you check that patient in, that patient is your responsibility until they're changed over to the next person. You need to be checking on that patient about every five minutes. Tell them, we're on it, she'll, she'll be with you, he'll be with you in a few minutes. And if it gets to a point where you free back up and that person's um, not going to be available, you just need to abort the order and take care of the patient. You can communicate with the people around you. Um, but, but that's the order. We'll follow the order. And then that's the back out plan in case the order doesn't work. But please do check on the patient. When delivering the product to the patient is, so once, uh, once you start that dispense, when delivering to the product to the patient, it's expected that you'll do these things. Adjust the frame for comfort, check the vision far and near, tell the patient how to care and maintain their glasses, 
tell them about warranty information, and the patient may return for adjustments anytime at no charge, and that lens, we do offer lens solution refills. Now, I don't think everybody here knows that, but we'll, we'll give them a cloth. Every patient should have a cleaning cloth, and they should have some solution. Make sure you refill that, or we will refill that for them at no charge, the solution, so they can come by and do that. We, don't, we still don't tell them that all the time, but it is a benefit that we offer. Um, and seems like I was gonna say something else on that. Yes, um, so also, if we have a patient drop off their own frame and we do lenses in-house, I want all those glasses to have a case. We have tons of cases. In fact, we have to give them away oftentimes. So find a case in the lab that we're not using, put their frame in our case, <coughs> and give them a lens cloth and a solution. I mean, just put, again, these are the ribbons and the bows on what we do. Those things really don't cost us anything. And it, 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 it makes the product finished. You can put it in a bag too. I mean, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. But I do want it in a case. Give them a cloth, give them a solution. When you're done uh, dispensing, sign the patient out. Uh, but let me go through this line a little bit more. So on the next slide, uh, moving on right here, um, adjust the frame for comfort. We'll talk about that on the next slide. Check the vision far and near. I would have them look across the way. You might have them look out onto the street and just say, are things clear out there in the distance? I would just do both eyes. If you start doing one eye at a time, it takes some time for the patient to adjust. Just make sure it's generally right in the distance. And then, especially if they have bifocals, give them a near card to make sure that the near prescription is correct. Care and maintenance of the glasses. Now, uh, um, our opticians know how to care and maintain the glasses. Um, if you're not an optician and you don't know, you, you'll be pairing up with an optician this week. But 100% cotton cloth to clean glasses, never any paper products. Paper scratch, those are wood fibers. Wood's hard, wood scratches off AR. So used 100% cotton, like an old t-shirt will work, with a little spray from the spray bottle. Or the microfiber cloths will clean the lenses and the coating and it will not scratch. You can clean dry with a microfiber cloth. Now, I've always hesitated to say that. There's no reason they can't put a little spray on there, but now that I'm here, I've cleaned my glasses dry for years with a microfiber cloth and they don't scratch. Um, vision, comfort, maintenance, warranty. Um, generally speaking, everything is warranty for a year, lenses, frame, uh, uh, coatings. Uh, usually one-time replacement on those. Um, against manufacturer's defect, lenses against scratching. So frames against manufacturer's defect, lenses against scratching. There are some exceptions to that. Some things will warranty longer. If, and I still say you're welcome to tell a patient that, but if you tell a patient, if you know that the warranty's longer, and you tell the patient that the warranty's longer, it really needs to go in the notes. Uh, at some point, once it gets beyond a year, it's a little bit at our discretion. Um, pretty much no questions mm -hmm. asked for a year. Um, patient may return for adjustments anytime in solution refills. Sign the patient out. So now on frame adjusting, this is going to take a few slides. I've got 15 minutes here and we'll get it wrapped up. Frame adjusting is 50% art and 50% engineering. That's from the optician's training manual, which is right here. The four point adjustment method is the engineering of a, of a frame adjustment. Putting the frame, you're gonna put a frame, you start out by getting a frame into standard alignment, especially if somebody comes in and sat on their frame, if they stepped on their glasses, if the glasses are all sorts of crazy bent. You wanna get it back looking approximately like the manufacturer sent it to us. And then you can work back and make customized adjustments to the patient's face. So whenever you're adjusting, not whenever, but as a standard treatment, we want the frame to be approximately looking right before we make it customized to the patient's face. So when you are adjusting, now this is your handout right here, and these points that I have, one through nine, are in more detail on your sheet. When you adjust, you wanna start at the bridge and work out. So in the example of the patient who sat on their glasses, this eyepiece may be bent down. 
but this temple may be bent up. You don't want to adjust the temple out here until you have the eyepiece in the middle set properly. So you're going to have to use your fingers and your tools to get the bridge set properly so that it's straight. Um, as a, another example of that, if a patient comes in wearing and the bridge is just crooked across their face, you want to look and see if there's a bridge problem first before you start adjusting out here. So as you're working from the bridge out, number one, make sure the bridge is straight. Number two, ensure that the frame wrap is appropriate for the lenses. Again, you're here in the middle. A minus lens will have less wrap. A plus lens will have more wrap. A plus lens has more natural curvature to it. So in order to keep a plus eight lens in a frame, this whole entire frame is gonna have to turn more to keep that lens in. To keep a minus eight lens in a frame, this whole frame will have to flatten out a little bit more to keep that lens in the frame. Uh, so we're moving from the bridge out, now we're down to the nose pads. Make sure that the nose pads are balanced and sitting approximately at the same spot on the frame. Remember, we're going back to manufacturer's alignments here. Check the lens seating. So you're gonna look 360 degrees around the lens, make sure that there's no gaps and make sure that the lens is cut big enough. Well, uh, I actually wore these semi on purpose. This lens is not cut, cut big enough. If you ever catch this when you're dispensing, you know, this happened to me once and I didn't know what to do. The lenses came out loose. I told the patient, but I ended up giving it to him. And that's not what we put out. This is frustrating for a patient. That should have been, I should have pulled that. We called him after the fact and he said he was fine, but I wish that we would have pulled it and remade that lens so that it stays in there right. So you need to look around and make sure that there's no gaps. Did I cut that? Yeah. <laughs> this that, was prior. That was when we were figuring out the edger. Oh. You can fix it now if you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Send him a Christmas. Yeah, uh, check the lens seating. Um, also, you know, on the lens seating, say that the patient sat on the glasses you, we've, some of us have seen this before where this, this wire is bent. It's down and it's out of whack because the patient may have sat this way. So we're working from the bridge out and you're gonna look 360 degrees around and make sure that this lens aligns, this, this uh, wire aligns with the lens all the way around. Now, we call this four point adjustment. The next point is why we call it four point adjustment. That is that when we want to have this frame sit four points upside down. That means the top of the lens on each side touches the page, the temples touch the page. That one is four point adjusted. Again, when it's totally out of whack, this is where you want to get it before you make customizations for the patient. Temples perpendicular to the frame front. So, um, just make sure you've got a right angle right there between the temple and the frame front. Flip the frame and ensure that the curve is balanced. So now where the temples curve down, you should have approximately the same curve at the same point on each of those temples. If their ears are straight. One, another way to do that would be since this lines up here, then these temples should approximately touch the page at the same spot there. Oh, oh my. I saw you. Is that mine or yours? No, um, so the, at this point, when everything's balanced on this side and the curve is the same, then the temple should touch the page or the, or the table at the same spot on each side. Okay, close the temples, not too loose and not too tight. It can be so tight that you can't even turn these in. It can be so loose that these things shake. It should have about the same tension on each side. If you wanna, uh, I would expect whenever you adjust frames that you tighten the screws on each of these temples. You probably wanna tighten the screws on, uh, what do we call this part, the, the lens wire, the wire that goes around the lens. Um, and then when you close the temples, um, they should lightly cross over each other and not crisscross. So this frame is in good manufacturer's alignment. It just happens to fit my face that way. But now that you've established four point alignment, you should strive to create three point touch. The first was the engineering. 
Now this is the art. You're going to artistically move this frame to fit that individual's face. You know, most of the time, when you're here, if you have a brand new pair of glasses, you've already got that. But you do need to look it over. Sometimes the lab needs to bend the glasses in order to get the lenses in right. So you may have to get it into right manufacturer's adjustment when it comes back from the lab so that you can customize it to the patient's face. The frame should have equal, now we go from four point touch to three point touch, four point alignment <coughs> on the table with the frame upside down to three point touch on the patient's face. The frame should have equal weight on the nose and the two ears. That's what three point touch is. Again, move, begin at the bridge and move outward. So um, the tools that you'll use for this are the frame warmer. I think we only have an air blower, right? They also make these frame warmers with glass beads. Those are a little stronger. Um, they're nice, but we just don't have one. Um, you, you'll turn on the air blower to heat uh, a xyle frame, which are our plastic frames. Plastic frames need to be heated. Metal frames probably don't need to be heated. Be careful heating, especially the cheapy frames can melt really fast. Now when you have good frames, they're made out of better plastics and they don't melt and you don't have to worry about it, but they can turn into almost into a jelly and you have to be really careful. Pliers, we have different types, gripping, angling, nose uh, <coughs> pliers, axis adjusting pliers, and then use your fingers. Okay, how to adjust. The nose pads. Basically, nose pads should sit flat. We have equal weight and they should sit as flat as possible on the nose. Use the nose pad, pad pliers. <coughs> if, you, if you widen the nose pads, then it'll sit lower on the face. If you tighten the nose pads, it'll sit higher on the face. And then you can use the nose pad pliers to swivel those nose pads into place. I don't have a picture of those pliers but you guys will be pairing up with opticians and you'll get a chance to look at those. Okay, so these are in order. Well, no, okay, so, we, so we're working from the inside out. You got your nose pads. You put some wrap in the glasses or face form. Generally, it's, generally it's best to have a little curvature on the front of the glasses. Lenses work optically better if they curve a little bit to the contour of people's faces. People's faces curve a little bit. So we want the lenses to generally match that. Um, to do that, I would generally put your thumbs <coughs> in the center of the bridge and move inward like that. If you want to put some negative wrap into the glasses, you can push out that way. Panoscopic tilt. Again, lenses work optically better when they're wrapped. Lenses work optically better when they're a little closer to your face on the bottom side than on the top side. If you think about reading, you have to look down. You need about 10 degrees of tilt in glasses. To induce a panoscopic tilt, you'll use um, the adjusting pliers. There's some with white nylon on the top and metal on the bottom. And generally you just turn down each of, you hold, you brace the frame here and you turn down the temple this way, which tilts the bottom a little bit closer to the patient's face. Skew is the frames are not level. One side is higher or lower, one lens is closer or further to the face. Um, we use this in, in, out, out, up, up, down, down. <coughs> Don't do BA start if anybody gets that. Um, so if the right side of the frame is higher on a patient's face, then the right temple goes higher, and that drops it. If the right lens is closer to the patient's face, then the right temple moves in. Remember, these are all starting from the point of Manufacturer. manufacturers, mm -hmm. um, what, the way that the manufacturer should send it to us. There are some cases where you would not just take the, if one lens is sitting closer to the face, um, sometimes you'll end up moving both temples. But for this purpose, it's back in manufacturer's alignment. So if the right lens is closer, you move the right temple in. Again, this is all in your notes. 
um, that will be in the lab on how to make adjustments. Temples. The curve should, now we're talking temp, temp, the temple should no more than lightly touch the side of the face here. The, the curve of the temple should generally follow the contour of the ear. Sometimes you'll see them at 90 degrees. That's going to be painful for the patient back there. Um, I think most of the, this has less of an, this is built this way, um, but this has less of, the, of an angle than normal. Most of the time I think that temple angle is at about 30 degrees. But you need to look, this is totally gross sometimes, but you need to look behind the patient's ear and make sure it angles properly and it follows the contour of that bone back there and that it doesn't push too hard. Okay, if you need to raise or lower a bifocal, um, you can move the nose pads out. That'll lower the bifocal. And you can increase the panoscopic tilt. That'll also lower the bifocal. If you need to raise it, just do the opposite. You can, if, the, if, if you check out the glasses <coughs> and then the axis of the astigmatism is off just a little bit after they've been made, we have some players in the, in the lab that look like they have two pads, two circular pads on them. You can actually take them and turn the axis and then check it on the lensometer. So those, we don't use those a lot, but those axis adjusting pads are good. You don't have to remake it. You just change the axis a little bit yourself. Check it on the lensometer, and when it lines up, it should be, it, it should be good to go. So those are basic adjustments. It, it would be expected that you guys would read more in depth on those sheets and that you would peruse the adjusting manual. Um, we'll practice over the next two weeks. Basically, if you think you're deficient in adjusting, then you need to pair up with somebody that doesn't think they're deficient in adjusting. So generally speaking, I would say opticians and Violet and Jonathan are probably the go-to people these days for adjusting. And uh, over the next two weeks, I mean, almost on a daily basis, the managers need to be assigning you with that employee. And as those adjustments come in, you need to, if you're uncomfortable at first, you can hang over the shoulder of the employee, but you know, in a couple days, you need to transition to doing the adjustments yourself with the guidance of the employee. I'd add Monica to that list too, because Monica <laughs> did a lot. She, Monica's totally on that list. She does a lot of adjusting already. So opticians, Monica, uh, Jonathan, and Violet. Um, you guys need to, uh, but the rest of us need to pair up and make sure that we're up to task on that adjusting so that in two weeks we can say um, we've had some successes and failures and this is what it is and we can discuss and readjust. I really want everybody to be able to do everything in this office so that we can transition almost seamlessly through all the different activities. Now, that's, I'm done with adjusting, and this is my last slide. I just did want to review. I challenged you guys last time. Um, our revenue per refraction right now for the beginning of January is 680. The goal was 382, so wow. that's really good. I don't know. Those things ebb and flow. I think this is a busy time because right now the national average is 550. But either way, we're beating the national, we're beating the national average from 2018. And we're beating the national average right now, so kudos to you guys. You've got a couple more days to finish that up. Today's the 23rd. And then revenue per contact lens fit. This wasn't very good when we met two weeks ago, but right now it's at 390. We're beating national, current national average, and the goal was 330. Um, so kudos to you guys on that, too. You guys must like paid time off. <laughs> so keep it up. Now, I am done at 620. Wow, I finished exactly on time if anybody needs to go. Feel free to go, and I will have to go in the next 10 minutes or so, but we can chat if anybody wants to afterwards. <clears throat> Thanks.